Ratburger by David Williams. Chapter 17 I Smell a Rat. I smell a rat, wheezed Bert. Except it wasn't Bert. Well, it was Bert, but he had drawn a moustache on his face very poorly with a marker pen. What on earth are you doing here? said Zoe. And why have you got a moustache drawn on your face? It is a real moustache, my dear, said Bert. He breathed heavily when he spoke. His voice matched his face. They had both stepped out of a horror film. No, it's not. You've drawn it on. No, I haven't. Yes, you have, Bert. My name is not Bert, child. I am Bert's twin brother. What's your name, then? Bert thought for a moment. Bert. Your mother had twins and called them both Bert. We were very poor and we couldn't afford a name each. Just get out of my room, you creep. All of a sudden, Zoe heard her stepmother pound along the corridor. Don't you dare speak to the nice pest control man like that, she screeched as she waddled into the room. He's not the pest control man. He sells burgers, protested Zoe. Bert stood between them with a smirk on his face. It was impossible to see what his eyes were doing because his wraparound sunglasses were black as the deepest, darkest oil. What are you talking about, you stupid girl? He catches rats, shouted Zoe's stepmother. Don't you? Bert nodded silently and smiled, flashing his ill-fitting false teeth. The little girl grabbed her mother by her thick tattooed forearm and led her to the window. Look at his fan, she declared. Tell me what's written on the side. Sheila looked out of the grimy window to the vehicles parked down below. Bert's pest control, she read. What? said Zoe. She wiped some of the smudges off the window and peered out. The woman was right. It did say that. How was it possible? It looked like the same van. Zoe looked over at Bert. His smirk had widened. As she watched, he took a dirty little brown paper bag out of his pocket and picked something out of it. Zoe could have sworn whatever he put in his mouth was moving. Could it have been a cockroach? Was this that depraved man's idea of a snack? See, said Bert, I'm a rat catcher. Whatever, said Zoe. She turned to her stepmother. Even if he is, which he isn't because he's a burger van man, why is he in my bedroom? She demanded. He is here because he heard at school that you bought a rat into your lessons, replied her stepmother. It's a lie, said Zoe lying. Then why did I get a call from your headmaster today? Eh? Eh? Answer me. He told me everything, you disgusting little girl. I don't want any trouble, my dear, said Bert. Just hand the little creature over. He held out his grubby and gnarled hand. Bert had a dirty old cage on the floor by his feet that looked like it was made from a metal basket from a deep fat fryer. Only, instead of using it to fry chips, he had squashed hundreds and hundreds of rats into it. At first glance, Zoe thought the rats were dead as they weren't moving. On closer inspection, she realised they were alive, 
It was just they were packed in so tight they could hardly move. Many looked like they could hardly breathe either. They were all so squashed in together. It was a sickening sight, and Zoe wanted to cry at the shock and cruelty of it. Just then, Zoe felt Armitage wiggling in her breast pocket. Perhaps he could smell fear. The little girl discreetly brought her hand up to her breast to hide the wiggles. Her mind was racing with potential lies. Before she arrived at one, I set him free. She said, "The headmaster is right. I did bring a rat into school, but I set him free in the park. Just to ask Raj, he told me to do it." You should go and look for the rat in the park," she added, suddenly cupping Armitage through her blazer pocket, as the little rodent was squirming like crazy. Now, there was a deathly pause. Then Bert sneered, "You are lying, my dear." "I'm not," said Zoe, a little too quickly. "Don't lie to the nice man." Bellowed Sheila, "We can't have another filthy, disease-ridden creature running around the flat." "I'm not lying," protested Zoe. "I can smell it," said the vile man, his vile nose twitching. "I can smell a rat from miles away." Bert sniffed the air, then wheezed. "Baby ones smell especially sweet." He licked his lips, and Zoe shuddered. "There's no rat here," said Zoe. "Hand it over," said Bert. "Then I give it a quick whack with this special high-tech rodent stunner." He produced a bloody mallet from his back pocket. "It's painless, really. They don't feel a thing. Then you can join his friends for a nice play in here." Bert indicated the cage by kicking it hard with the heel of his dirty boot. Zoe was horrified, but composed herself before she spoke. "You are quite wrong. I am afraid there is no rat here. If it comes back, we will of course call you immediately." "Thank you." "Hand it over now," wheezed the sinister man. Meanwhile. Sheila was studying the stepdaughter she loved intently, and noticed the awkward positioning of her left hand. "You vile creature!" accused the woman as she yanked her stepdaughter's hand away. "It's in her blazer." "Madam, you hold her down," directed Bert. "I can whack the rat through the cloth. There will be less blood on the carpet that way." No! Screamed Zoe. She tried to wrestle her arm away from her stepmother, but the woman was a lot bigger and stronger than her stepdaughter. The little girl lost her balance and crashed to the floor. Armitage wriggled out of her pocket and started scurrying across the carpet. Ah! Screamed her stepmother. Get it away from me! Trust me, he won't feel a thing," whispered, as he got down on his hands and knees, brandishing the bloody mallet. His nose twitched as he chased the rat around the room, whacking the implement onto the floor, missing Armitage by millimeters. "Stop!" screamed Zoe. "You'll kill him!" She tried to make a charge at the man. But her stepmother held her back by her arms. "Come here, you little beauty," whispered Bert as he brought the mallet crashing down repeatedly on the dusty carpet, plumes of ingrained dirt now exploding into the air with every thwack. Armitage scurried this way and that, trying desperately to avoid being whacked. The mallet walloped down. Just catching his tail, eek! Squealed the rat in pain 
and he dashed off to hide under Zoe's bed. This did not deter Bert, who, without taking off his dark glasses, got down on his belly and slithered under the bed like a snake, flailing his mallet wildly from side to side. Zoe writhed out of his stepmother's grasp and launched herself on the man's back as soon he appeared from under the bed. The little girl had never hit anyone before and now she had leaped to stride his back like a cowboy on a bull at an American rodeo, thumping his shoulders with all her might. Within seconds, her stepmother yanked off her hair and pinned her against a wall before Bert disappeared under the bed again. Zoe, no, you're an animal. You hear me? An animal, screamed the woman. Zoe had never seen her stepmother so uncontrollably angry. Muffled under the bed, Zoe could hear fud after fud of the mallet crushing down onto the carpet. Tears were streaming down the girl's face. She couldn't believe her beloved little friend was going to meet such a violent end. Thwack! And then there was silence. Bert wiggled out from under the bed. Exhausted, he sat on the floor. In one hand he held the bloody mallet. Between the fingers of his other hand, he held the lifeless armitage dangling by his tail before announcing triumphantly, Gotcha!